So here we are in Graves Lab, and I just wanted to make a quick video to demonstrate uh, some of the controllability issues we have with these dielectric di barrier discharge uh, cold atmospheric plasmas that we're interested in for biomedical applications. So here we have uh, one of the high voltage power supplies I'm going to talk about in my presentation. This particular one is a Trek 1040A. Uh, it's capable of outputting up to 10 kilovolts uh, at around 40 kilohertz. Um, this particular device costs about $15,000 and about 2% of the power that comes out of the plug actually comes out as dissipated in the plasma. Uh, so this guy is currently hooked up to a function generator here and the function generator feeds uh, the waveform of interest into this amplifier. It's amplified a thousand times. Um, and then we're actually going to use this to generate a plasma, as I'll show you. So we sort of monitor the proceedings over here uh, with this computer interface oscilloscope. Over here you can see this is a, a jet discharge system like I'll talk about. Uh, but the one we're interested in is right here. So all that we have here is we have this high voltage lead that's connected to an electrode and I've just placed a piece of borosilicate glass over the electrode. Uh, so I've turned the power level way down because I don't want to capture myself doing anything too stupid here. Uh, but hopefully it should illustrate some of, the, some of the challenges of controlling these plasmas. So here you can see uh, the glass slide here is a, basically a dielectric uh, over this piece of copper working electrode. And as I bring my finger close to it, you'll see a plasma discharge that will strike between my finger and the, the dielectric surface. Let's see if I can get in there and, yeah. So, okay, so here we are, I have a macro focus on now. And as I bring my finger in, you see there's no, no plasma, it feels not strong enough. And then I get close enough, and a plasma is ignited. Now, I can actually feel a little bit of dielectric heating occurring uh, due to capacitive coupling with my finger here. And you can imagine if you had a device like this, so at this low power level, that's just, the heating's just a little bit uncomfortable, but it's by no means dangerous or painful. But you can imagine at voltages five times higher than this, if you were trying to uh, move this device over the surface of a wound uh, to reduce bacterial load and improve wound healing, uh, it could be rather problematic because as the electrical properties, as the impedance of the wounded tissue changes as you raster it over the surface, uh, the discharge intensity is going to change. So the way this is currently set up, I'm using current limits here, uh, but even with current limitation, you still have this issue. So I am interested in designing control systems to tame this beast because it will bite you if you're not careful with it. While we're over here, I'll just take a second to demonstrate this plasma jet here. Uh, this is a very simple, uh, it's a dielectric barrier uh, direct discharge jet. Uh, so we just have a working electrode here that's attached to a high voltage power supply. It's about, uh, I'm going to turn it on at 10 kilovolts um, and about 20 kilohertz. Uh, down here I have this grounded electrode and I've just placed a, uh, I placed a slide here to act as sort of another piece of dielectric. This doesn't necessarily need to be here. Um, and when I turn the power supply on, I'm also going to flow some uh, mixture of helium and argon gas through here and uh, the plasma jet will ignite. So there's also a lot of uh, interest in using this for medical applications because you can shoot that jet uh, to get all sorts of hard to reach places. Uh, there's a lot of, there's particularly a lot of interest in using this. Oh, starting to stabilize there. Uh, a lot of use, interest in using this for uh, dental work. Clean up root canal. So here you can see this direct dielectric jet in action. Uh, as you can see, when I move 
this glass slide, the properties of the plasma, I mean, just visually, you can see the discharge properties changing. The plasma intensity is changing. The energy dissipation is most certainly changing as a result. Um, this is what you get if you were rasping along on the skin and you encounter areas of higher and lower impedance. Actually, if we go over here and we watch the oscilloscope, uh, you can see the current draw of the system change rather significantly as I change the impedance of that path. And so, ideally, a control system would be able to uh, keep things steady even as the impedance of the target changes. Obviously, with the lights off, this looks even cooler. There we have the uh, a helium plasma jet now running pure helium. And you can see, obviously, even at this pretty low power level, helium is easy to ionize. Uh, so, and once again. As I shift that piece of dielectric, you can see the power dissipation level changing.